Hi, this is Jason Samuel Chaplin here at St. Paul's Senior Services in San Diego. Glad that you could be with us today as we join in for Sunday worship. Take a moment and gather our thoughts as we begin our service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. I would invite you, as you may know it, to join with me as we say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly, and even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading for today is from the book of the prophet Jonah. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in, abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city, and sat down east of the city, and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it to come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. And when the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, <clears throat> You were concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from the left, and also many animals? This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. <clears throat> when it was about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because there, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, 
you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. <clears throat> when those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last, the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today we hear in both of our lessons a strong message that comes to us from the scriptures today about God's generosity and quite often for us as human beings our inability to be quite that generous, which we understand. We are in our human limitations and frailties, but we get reminded today about that God chooses to be merciful and loving steadfast love and to show his mercy forever we heard for several weeks now intensive teaching by jesus about life and living in the kingdom of god last sunday where peter asked him about how many times should i forgive someone and we heard about forgiveness that you forgive until there is always just need of forgiving and that god forgives with unmerited and grace without any favor and just does that because God loves us and wants to be in relationship. And we continue by hearing that about where uh, we were challenged that we are to forgive as we've been forgiven. Today we hear the story about Jonah. And Jonah, he really does not like the people of Nineveh. And we have to remember the Ninevites were enemies of the Hebrew people at that time. And they saw them as not good people. But God still appointed Jonah to go and said, tell them to turn from what they're doing, this wickedness. And he went, and of course he did not go easily, but he finally went and he said it. But his heart was not in it. But even though it wasn't, they heard the message and they turned and said, we will change how we treat people. And when they did, God was pleased and saw what they had done. But Jonah, he gets angry. And I don't know about you, but there's three times in here where he talks to God and says, well, I just would soon die. I don't know if I would be willing to go quite that far and tempt God with saying, well, just kill me. But he's so angry. He's so angry that God is showing mercy to his enemies. He is angry enough to say, well, just kill me. Because I actually thought they wouldn't believe me. And I thought you would get them, God. Well, Jonah goes out and he sulks and he pouts and he goes outside of the city. And God continues to try to teach. He's still patient with Jonah. So he tries to teach him the understanding of all things come from God. And God can do with those things and show mercy. So he gives a bush to give him shade out in the heat while he's out there sulking. <clears throat> but then God who gives the bush also then takes it away. And then Jonah's angry about that. And he says, angry enough to die again. And God says, well, you didn't make the bush happen. You didn't make the bush take away. Why are you angry? And then he even then says, don't you get it? It's just like these people in Nineveh. You didn't make them. If I choose to show mercy, so I can choose to do it because they are my creation." And Jesus just takes this a whole nother step further with this parable about the landowner. He hires all these people at different times, and he actually makes it available to people who come at different times of the day. Now, of course, there's a part of us, including me, that has a sense about fairness here. And you think, well, probably those people who 
did start earlier, probably will get a little bit more. It would seem right. But in the end, the point being made here that when the first grumble against him, he says, we all agreed on this and I just happened to need more work. And they came in and I chose to be as generous to them as I chose to be generous to you. And then he says, so are you envious because I am so generous? There's a thing about that today. We look in our own society, in our country, and in our communities. So often, we still struggle with this, that when people we perceive that don't deserve as much as maybe we worked hard for, we can hold it against them or build up stereotypes and build the type of dissension that is causing struggle and envy and strife in our communities and in our hearts, most of all. We need to realize that as God chooses to show mercy to us, whether we came first, middle, or last, God can choose to share that same mercy, and we should rejoice instead of being envious. We should rejoice that God is forgiving, loving, and if we choose to follow Jesus in the way that we say we will as Christians, then let us take on the mantle of his kingdom of heaven, of one that shows mercy, love, forgiveness. And let that be what marks us as a community, never to be envious, but to always err on the side of the generous love of God. Amen. Let us offer our prayers and our thanksgiving to God. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We also commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. And I would invite any of your prayers or thanksgivings at this time. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and in earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. May we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And again, thank you for coming and being together for worship today. Uh, you will notice on the screen my contact information, and I would invite you to contact me uh, for any kind of uh, reasons, pastoral care, or if you just want to have a conversation. would love to hear from you and to reach out to you. Feel free to also contact any of our other chaplains at any of our locations here at St. Paul's. Thank you, and... God bless you.